TC Guild Rocks, where we are going to go over certain cameras, uh, other people in this same degree, and the DMT, photo, graphics, design, and everything. So, my first guest is Trevor. Hey, how's it going today, Josh? Doing good, Trevor. How are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I'm a student here in the Digital Media Technology Program here at NWTC. I'll be graduating here in the spring. And I'm a big Canon ambassador, which we'll get into a little bit later. So, Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So currently, um, what are the two cameras that you have here? Yeah, so I have the, on the left-hand side here, I have the Canon R6 Mark II, and then it's baby brother, the Canon R8. So uh, they're both full frame cameras that shoot 4K up to 60 frames a second. They can go up to 180 frames in full HD. Uh, and then they're just all, they're packed with a bunch of other cool features that help with the pre-production and production process. Okay, so between the two cameras, what was the camera that you started out with to begin with before getting what the, the, your newest one? Yeah, so I started with the Canon R6 Mark II. Uh, I chose it because it's a really great hybrid camera. It does photos and video really well. Um, I chose it specifically because I believe it's that first step into like a pro mm -hmm. side camera. Okay. It has pro features like IBIS, which is in internal uh, stabilization. Um, it's got uh, two SD card slots, which allows you to uh, continue to record um, for longer periods of time without switching out the okay. SD card. It has a bigger battery, which again helps you record for longer periods of time, and it has a, a C Log 3, which is a log profile, which helps with uh, post production color grading and stuff like that. And 10 bit color, too. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, what are the two lenses you have on each of the camera? Yeah, so the one on the R6 Mark II is the 24 70 uh, f2.8. EF lens. Uh, it's my go to, it's my everyday use. I keep that on that camera all the time. Six on a pretty good sale. I, had, I traded in my other camera, and that's what I recommend to a lot of people mm -hmm. is just use what you got now and slowly work your way up, mm -hmm. right? So if you have, you know, something that's a little bit more budget friendly, that's mm -hmm. okay. Use that, learn it, figure out how to create the best image with it, and then work up to a nicer camera after that. Um, so that was about when I purchased it. Um, it's 2500 now, okay. but I purchased it for 15 Oh, good deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I traded in my other camera and got $1,000 okay. $1, for it. So, um, But the R8 was about 1200 which is another great full-frame option for um, uh, that's kind of budget-friendly. Mm -hmm. So, my one, one other question. Why did you end up going with Canon over like a Sony or, or any of the other brands that is out there? Yeah, yeah. So part of the reason was compatibility with different lenses. Um, I had already purchased a bunch mm -hmm. of EF glass, which is Canon's kind of lens mounting system. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was one reason. Some other reasons, and Sony does this very well as mm -hmm. well, 
Um, but at the time, Canon had better in-body colors. So when I was filming, I would get naturally better skin tones, naturally better uh, um, uh, blues and stuff mm -hmm. like that, better auto white balancing. Yeah. Um, and it also has really great autofocus as well. So, and that kind of ties into the fast paced nature of a lot of my productions. Sometimes I might not be able to tweak every setting perfectly. Okay. Uh, so I want to have some maybe auto features that really work well in those, in the, in mm -hmm. those moments. So I know that you work with drones a couple of times. I want to actually show you the drone that I work with. Yeah. And I want to ask you, in your opinion, what do you think about having a drone as a like part of your gear? Do you think it's more of a luxury item, or do you think it's more for or not luxury to yourself? Yeah. Um, so which one do you got here? This is the Mini 3. Mini 3? Yeah. DJI makes great drones, regardless of which one you get. Um, I would say DJI is, the Mini series specifically, is great for beginners because it offers a really budget-friendly option mm -hmm. for you to get into. I've seen a lot of Mini drones, especially the older models, go for as low as two, 300 yeah. bucks. Um, as for it being like a luxury item, mm -hmm. um, I think it depends, right? If mm -hmm. you're starting to get a lot of client work, if you're starting to get some jobs with businesses mm -hmm. as an independent contractor, Adding a drone is a really easy way of upping that production value to the next level. Mm -hmm. I found that when I first started using a drone, that was a big selling point for a lot of the small businesses I was working with mm -hmm. um, because they didn't really think that having aerial footage of their business mm -hmm. would have been available at the price point that we were quoting them at. So um, it wouldn't necessarily be the first thing I run out and buy mm -hmm. as a beginner, but definitely something that I would keep on my list You know, once you get the essentials, the basics down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so for like the Mini 3, one of the things is I like is very easy to use compared to like oh, like, yeah. like uh, other drones, like those bigger like expired drones for GGI. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to use, easy to pick up. Some of the modes like what we call it, like the panning shots, I mm -hmm. love how it turned out. The only downside I have with these drones is like you can't really change the eyes so like Specifically, there's like just a setting that you have to set it to, and then it just depends on how bright and that's how the ISO. That's the only thing I would say is bad about drones. Not a lot of manual. Features yeah, and stuff like that. it's like mostly set and, and then if you turn the brightness, that's the ISO and the F stop pretty much. Mm -hmm. One thing to keep in mind with drones specifically, like mm -hmm. the Mini, is it's 245 grams. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a law in the United States that if you fly a drone for commercial purposes that is over 245 grams, you need a, a what is it? Oh. Is, is it? Of like course, a, I forget about it now. Uh, it's the. I know what you talk about. It's like like a a Part 107 yeah, drone license. <laughs> um, and so it's a really great option for beginners um, if you don't want to get that license right away. Um, but because it's 245 grams the wind really can, especially if you have a lot of wind, mm -hmm. can really disrupt it and make getting that yeah, shot really difficult. That so. is something I've noticed when I've tried to use it a couple of times. So uh, other than like the camera you use, what other equipment would you recommend like a, somebody starting out to actually get? Yeah, yeah, so in the end of the day, the equipment that you already have is, is gonna be the best because you have it and you can work with mm -hmm. it. Um, obviously, I would try to get, as you, as you upgrade, Getting a camera mm -hmm. is really important. Getting you know budget-friendly lenses like the 50 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, is really important. Um, tripods, a basic lighting mm -hmm. setup. Um, you can get a basic like lavalier setup yeah. for relatively cheap. Um, so it's it's more of a fact that you try to o over time add to your mm -hmm. arsenal a little bit, little bit, little bit, uh, mm -hmm. and then you have a pretty good uh, catalog of equipment that you can work from. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would say start with what you have. Mm -hmm. um, and then the biggest thing is, especially when I'm purchasing things, is mm -hmm. I, I enjoy cameras, I enjoy using them, mm -hmm. but in the end of the day, they're tools. Mm -hmm. So if you're not gonna be able to make money from it and get a return on your investment, mm -hmm. that might be a situation where you ask, do I really need this? Yeah. Or am I just getting this because I want it? Sure. If that's the case, then maybe it goes further down that list, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I remember I wanted an FPV drone for the longest time, oh. <laughs> and I could not justify it because I would crash that thing immediately. Like you have to be straight. You have to be very skilled to use the. Isn't that like a course that you gotta take for FPV? 
to uh, like before you actually get fly the real one? Uh, you you can fly it, but if you don't train before you fly it, you will crash it <laughs> immediately, two seconds out of the box. It's not making it off the ground. So, um, like your mini two, <laughs> <laughs> like my mini two, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a that's a story for a different day. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that that story of me crashing the <laughs> drone off camera. Yeah. So other than that, the last question: what, If you can have one thing to add to your um, set, what would it be and why? Hmm. So it, it changes. It changes mm -hmm. based on what the project I'm doing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think a really good set of prime lenses. Prime lenses? Prime lenses that could be used. Um, I have, like I said, a versatile zoom lens here with the 24 to 70. I have mm -hmm. a 70 to 200. Um, but they both stop down to 2.8. Mm -hmm. If I could get a really good set of primes, 35, 50, 85 at 1.8, mm -hmm. that would make a really beautiful image when <laughs> I do have an opportunity mm -hmm. to set up the frame and manipulate the frame a little bit more. Okay. So. Any final words that you want to say to the audience? Um, Canon is better. <laughs> and uh, thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks for being <laughs> on. So that was Trevor with his Canon. Pick Sony, still better. <laughs> so up next is Mikey. How you doing, Mikey, today? Good, how are you? So tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I'm Mikey. Uh, I like to do like car videography and photography. I'm um, also looking to get into like some real estate photography and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so tell me about the camera that you have right here. So this is a 6700, it's an APS-C oh, okay. uh, style camera. Um, so it does have that crop sensor, mm -hmm. makes it a little bit more affordable. Oh. Um, it's really nice, uh, it's a hybrid camera, so it does video oh. and photo pretty well. Um, shoots in 422 10-bit color, mm -hmm. uh, 4K, uh, 120 frames per second. So that's always nice uh, for getting nice crisp, crisp slow motion mm -hmm. shots and things like that. Um, and the baseline ISOs on the thing are super nice as well. You can bump up that ISO up to no, like uh, 3200 and it's still looking pretty crisp. So, I guess for you, what is one of your favorite features on the camera that you so far use? Favorite feature on the camera? Great question. Um, honestly, the camera is nice all around, mm -hmm. but I really like uh, being able to mess with uh, the profile picture, uh, shooting like S log and stuff like that. Oh, okay. uh, kind of. Uh, works my mind a little bit mm -hmm. more in the editing process and trying to color grade it. So uh, I think that's just a good opportunity for me to learn more things with the okay. camera. So I want to show you my camera okay. that is an older motor than yours. This is the A6400. A lot beefier than yours, if yeah. you could just tell. Right. And what's up here is just, um, I would recommend probably getting a monitor just to, so it's not shooting always on there. And yep. it's, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. But, so, one of the comparisons I could tell other than the size is probably the screen. So, if your your screen can flip out, yep. can flip out, can do this, all that. Mine cannot do that. Okay. Mine can only go, like, up to here and right here. So, it's not... That's the one disadvantage I don't like about my camera compared to it. Right. But, yeah, it's not the best. But other, what are the two lenses that you have? So I have a 16 to 50 on here. Mm -hmm. um, kind of got that uh, with the camera as a kit okay. lens. Kind of just looking to use that one to practice like real estate photography. Okay. You need a nice wide angle lens for mm -hmm. that. Um, and then since I'm doing some car things, I did pick up a, seven, or a 55 to 200. Okay. Um, just gives me some more versatility mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to shooting outside, changing up the field of view with the background and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, definitely gives you some more opportunities. So. Well, what was the if you didn't get if you just got the camera? What's the cost of the lens you have, the kit lens, and the cost of this one too? Yeah, so the camera was fourteen hundred. Mm -hmm. This lens is regularly three hundred dollars, but since it's a mm -hmm. kit lens, it brings it down to mm -hmm. just an additional hundred dollars. Oh, okay. So it makes the bundle fifteen hundred dollars, which oh. is pretty reasonable for a sixteen to fifty yeah. millimeter. So um, the seventy or the fifty five mm -hmm. to two hundred is. Uh, Three hundred dollars, brand new, I believe, is the retail mm -hmm. price. So, so if I if I remember correctly, I spent about like twelve. 
okay. for both the lens and because I think the lens, if I recall, is about like 300, 500 okay. specifically. But because I got it as a as my starting lens, it it went only to 12. So it it was it's a lot less than ha <laughs> this and this. Right. But I say it's a very really good quad. Other than what other features um, do you have on here that this one would not have? Um, so to my knowledge, I don't think yours can shoot in 4K 120. No. Um, only up to 60, if I'm correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and that's a huge reason why I really wanted the 6700. Mm -hmm. uh, getting that 120 frames per second for me uh, is really important because of uh, shooting car video yeah. getting some nice slow motions of that yeah um, you can cut that all the way down to 30 frames per second and it's gonna look very crisp um, yeah so yeah yeah one other thing I noticed is that with the monitor I have here if we put it on yours for example you can shoot the uh, 4k but if we put it on mine I cannot shoot 4k right yeah yeah we did notice that earlier I'm unaware why that that's the case um, my my best guess is because it is an older model yeah and I'm guessing they would not really um, try and what you call it they didn't picture that would be a more mainstay on newer cameras so maybe that's why they added on on your camera that this can work on there right okay other than like your camera what other equipment would you say yourself that you would bring on your shoots uh, so a lot of stuff I'm um, uh, I use is obviously like tripod mm -hmm. lighting equipment. Um, I really like the tripod because it helps with mm -hmm. low light shooting, being able to mm -hmm. open up your shutter speed a little bit longer yeah. um, to keep that ISO down, obviously reduce mm -hmm. the noise. Um, yeah. Lighting kit I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, I'm really looking into investing into a gimbal. I get that nice hand steady. Speed okay, I will, I will mention something about gimbal. Mm -hmm. Gimbals are nice and hand steady, but you got to also think about if you're actually going to use it a lot more than just a, a couple of shots. Because if, if you're only going to use it for a couple of shots, it's not going to be worth the investment of getting it. Right. But one thing it would be worth is a smart rig that you don't have on yours. Yeah. <laughs> because of the small rig, it would give you a little bit more protection and also give you more sh rigs like on mine that I have like two of them. Right. There. Yeah, with these little Sony cameras, the grips are so small with them on the hybrids that once you're like fully gripping on that thing, you don't get really much grip. So no. having that small rig yeah. in there definitely helps with that. Like on um, mine, mine you can hold it. It's a little bit beefier, but it feels a lot more nicer than just having it without it. Right. And one other feature that I noticed that mine doesn't have, it doesn't have anything to put like like your headphones in like yours would yeah we did notice that on comparison is yeah. uh, yours did not have a headphone jack to listen to your audio out so yeah you can actually I, don't, I don't know it was just only this model and then the next model after it did came with that okay. but for some reason they didn't want to add it on here yeah that's interesting <laughs> yeah but any last statements you want to say to like the future of students of Indo ATC that are going through this program um yeah, don't listen to the guy before. Uh, Sony is <laughs> king. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, he, he's but, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Your, he, your opinions are your opinions, well, listen, right? <laughs> listen, he might be high, a little bit high, but hey, yeah. he still works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you consider it that, right? But thank you for your time, yeah, Mikey. Appreciate thank having you. me on here. So yeah. Have a good one. Don't forget your other lens. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yeah. I want that. So before we introduce our last guest, we're gonna we're gonna go through our commercial.
Well, sorry about the commercial. Apparently, our technical difficulties is going on, but we could talk a little bit about um, the about the commercial. So the commercial was a local business, um, family owned by two Salvadorian and Honduran. I can't say it well. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. yeah. and they want. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to do this. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to do a video. They wanted yeah, to be it, a that, small yeah. business. They, yeah. I would say they probably don't have much of a social media presence. No. They so have we, so me and my friend here, Logan, we yeah. actually did a video for them about their business. Uh, their main business is about pupusas, um, what's it, quesadillas, and other, other, yeah, or, other meats. Yeah, like, other meats. Bari, I believe. Bari, I think is the closest thing, but yeah. it it was a very fun video. But now let's, I guess, get to yeah. what we're here for. Okay. So, Logan, can you tell who you are? So I'm Logan. I'm a NWTC student here. Um, I just I'm in the DMT program, and I'm also technically in the video production technical diploma. They kind of go two and two together, so it's nice getting two degrees, but um, the camera I have here today is the Panasonic S52X, a lot of numbers I know, but it's a full frame mirrorless camera. Okay, um, for the camera, what are some of, some of the features that you like about the camera and what's some that you don't like? So I would say that I like, um, of course, one of the main things is the 6K open gate. So you can shoot in an aspect ratio of three to two instead of 16 by nine. And by shooting in three to two, you can, um, you have a lot more reframing opportunities. So if you wanted to zoom in, or even if like, you could almost stabilize footage too, cause you have so much more wiggle room. Cause it's like 2000 more pixels than 4K. You can, you ju it's just very flexible in what you can do with it. You can shoot like 16 by 9 video but you can also if you wanted to reframe it to um, 9 by 16 so vertical video you could do that with the 16 by 9 mm -hmm. video and still have really high qualities guess what I'm trying to get um, so yeah and another plus would be um, well since it's a big camera and full frame you can get a lot of light and it's just so much easier to get good lighting and uh, the screen there's just so many good things it's it's a big upgrade compared to my previous camera which is the a6300 so it's very similar to his a6400 but it's it's still a little bit outdated yeah that camera was like the like the first of the line of what mine it was yeah so it's just like the previous version mm -hmm. but i mean it's still decent for what it was and for what for a sorry camera, that's uh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty decent. Yeah. So tell me about the three lenses that you have here. Okay, so the the lens I have currently on the camera is a Panasonic twenty four to seventy. So Panasonic and Leica teamed up together to make this lens. It's an L mount lens, so Leica mount, and it's a two point eight. It was down to two point eight uh, f stop, so it's really versatile. It's very similar to. Um, Trevor's camera, he or his lens, because his is a 24 to 70 as well, 2.8. So it's it's a very popular uh, zoom lens, and it's it's a great all arounder. Like I said, it's like my my daily lens as well, just because it's so versatile. And then this lens over here, I have an 18 millimeter, so that's for like really wide angle shots, and it goes down to an f-stop of 1.8. So if I wanted to get even brighter or even greater depth of field or that blurriness, I could do that with that. And then my next lens I have over here, that's an 85 millimeter 1.8, and it just gives me a little bit of extra zoom if I wanted to get that tiny bit of extra zoom in when I don't have just enough on my 24 to 70 there. But it's pretty good. It's I have kind of have a, a full range. The only thing I think I would really need. Next, I guess, is something that's like super zoomed in, but that's going to be a while before I get that. <laughs> yeah. So, 
I remember that you told me that it is pretty pricey for the one you had there. Yeah, so, so tell me the price of all, the whole set. Yeah. So um, it is very pricey considering they it's Panasonic lens made for a Panasonic camera. So generally buying it from the same manufacturer is going to be expensive. But the 24 to 70, I think brand new, I think... I think the price has gone down a little bit, but brand new it was around two thousand dollars. But I got it used for thirteen hundred dollars, so it was a pretty good deal. And it pretty much was like in brand new condition. It just had a little dust on it. Not that big of a deal. Um, the eighty-five millimeter actually came free with my camera because there was a special sale going on. So it's like a five hundred fifty dollar lens, I believe, and I got for free. So I mean that's save me a ton and then this 18 millimeter may be small but it costs a thousand dollars for that which is pretty insane a thousand dollars for this little yep, one for that low one so jesus yeah, christ so you can, don't judge a book by its cover <laughs> and know that lenses cost too much yeah. but we it's necessary yeah, for our I work I, yeah <laughs> then i guess i could mention the the camera itself too i bought that new it was around two thousand dollars so yeah it's, it adds up but i mean but it's a beef. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's beefy, but it, I'm going to use this for a while and probably a lot for my more professional career. But, yeah. Okay, other than, like, the camera and your lenses, what other things would you recommend other people to have in their kit? In their kit? Well, one thing I have been thinking about, of course, is audio. So I do have a... Uh, a small mic, it's a Rode video mic go to. So I think it's a little small condenser mic that would go on my hot shoe here. Um, it's good, I'd say, for like more close up things. So if I was trying to record, let's say, like an interview, I could have my camera fairly close to them and I could capture their audio just fine. But I think a lapel mic would be a good investment to add just because it's even better for interviews and. You're not as so restricted as compared to this because the farther you back up or the farther you're away from what you're trying to capture, the more echoey or just strange it sounds. It doesn't sound right. I guess beca like because you mentioned lapel, is there a Pacific lapel that you're thinking of maybe getting? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I was thinking probably more heading towards the DJI um lapels i think they have the they came out with a second version of it recently mm -hmm. but i mean even the one before it was really good so mm -hmm. maybe even get a deal on that but otherwise um i know road also makes their own version mm -hmm. and they they're both really good honestly like i can't i don't i really have any like the thing only, against them yeah the only thing i would say if you're thinking about getting a lapel do a little bit of research between um which lapel yeah. you want to get yeah, but I mean, like, if you're, like, on a big budget mm -hmm. or something, too, I mean, even, like, a semi-cheaper lapel of, like, maybe, like, a hundred dollars would still get you semi-decent quality for mm -hmm. what it is, and if you're just a starter, that's fine. Yeah, should just be fine, but yeah. any last words that you want to mention before? Um, I mean, Panasonic is great. <laughs> I mean, so is Canon and Sony. I'm not here because I owned a Canon. I owned a Sony. I had an A6300, and then now I have this. But I'm probably going to be sticking with this for a while. But, I mean, they're all great. Everyone has their pros and cons. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a hater like the previous two guys, but, I mean, they're both it, good. Yeah. The only thing you haven't tried is Nikon, yeah. <laughs> What's it? Oh, yeah, Nikon. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I hate Nikon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you hate one. Okay, yeah, maybe that one. Just because... Uh, I feel like Nikon's more for photography rather than yeah. video, yeah, but okay. I mean I could be completely wrong on it. I also don't know much about it, but yeah, I wear a mat. I just, I just whenever I was looking up videos or researching about cameras or purchasing cameras, a Nikon never really came up for that. So yeah, yeah. But thank you for being on the show. Yeah, of course. Okay, okay good. Now, the final thing I, I will say before I get out of here is that the three things I will recommend is, one, think about the price of what camera you're thinking, and number two, what kind of, like, what are you going to use it for, and 
what because if you're only gonna use it for photos pick a more uh, camera that would be more suited for photos and then the last thing is have fun with just wherever option you go it doesn't really matter having the most expensive camera or lenses just how to use it but other than that thank you for joining and RTC Gearbox and I will see you next time